Hello friends, we are going to start memory read and memory write cycle for 806 microprocessor. So basically what is this cycle? So when the microprocessor performs the operation, it fetches some instruction and the fetching of the instruction is done by bus interface unit and the execution operation which is done by microprocessor that is done by execution unit. So whatever the execution parts and in that whatever the time state required is not consisting of machine cycle. Whereas whatever operation performed by execution unit, it takes the input instruction from instruction queue which is available in bus interface unit. So bus interface unit provides all the instruction which are being required to be executed by microprocessor. Bus interface unit consists of machine cycles. Now what do you mean by machine cycles are? It is nothing but the number of T states which are required for some operations. And in that operation what is being performed is there is a whatever the data forwarded from bus interface unit to the external world that are being counted in the T state. So for example fetching the data from the memory, fetching the instruction from the memory or fetching data or writing the data to the memory or IO devices is done by the bus interface unit. So bus interface unit takes some time or it takes some machine cycle to complete this operation. And in the case of 806, it takes minimum four T states which com combiningly form a machine cycle. So we are going to see what do you mean by machine cycle and what are the read and write cycle for 806 microprocessor. So we are going to start with the minimum mode configuration of 806 microprocessor. Now this is the minimum mode configuration of 806 microprocessor. So firstly the important part of this minimum mode configuration is this MN or MX bar is connected to VCC which signifies the 806 microprocessor system is in minimum mode. So this is the first part. Now after that the clock generator circuit which is 8284 which is used for providing reset clock and ready signal to the 806 microprocessor and it gets the oscillator frequency from the oscillator which is being connected at this part through x1 and x2 pin of the 8284. Now after that what we are going to see today is nothing but what are the data lines consist in the respective T state. Now that means when some operation we perform in that operation how the operation is divided into the number of parts and how that number of parts are being calculated and how it is being represented. So for that purpose first of all we will see this is the M oblique IO bar. This is the output pin of 806 microprocessor. After that this is read bar, this is write bar. Now these three signals are used for providing the signals to memory that is MRD bar. So combination of this M oblique IO bar and RD forms a MRD bar which is nothing but memory read signal. Similarly this is the memory write signal that is MWR bar. The third one is IO read bar and the fourth one is IOWR bar. When these signals are initiated, the respective operation are being performed. So in this case, the operation which is performed is memory read. For memory write, MWR bar. For reading the contents from IO devices, it forms IO read. And for writing the contents to IO, it is IO write bar. Now next signal is ALE, that is address latch enable. Address latch enable signifies what is carried by address bus in the first T state and when the other T state happens, what is the carried by the respective bus. So that we are going to see in the timing diagram. After that, for latching the address which is being provided from this AD0 to AD15 and A16 to A19 that is being latched onto the 8282 latch ICs. 
next is transceiver so the data can flow from 8086 to the memory or memory to the 8086 so for deciding the direction of this data bus the transceiver is used so transceiver transceiver is nothing but the bidirectional buffer which is used for providing the data to the microprocessor or which is used for providing the data to the memory so this is the second block apart from that this is one of the case of rom which is being connected and for rom case we have to only read the data from the rom so for that purpose the memory read signal is only connected to the rom whereas in the case of ram will require memory read as well as memory write signal because ram is a random access memory which can be read as well as which can written by the 8086 microprocessor apart from that one of the io devices which will have io read and io write signal now next signals are dtr and den now den is used for specifying data is being forwarded from the memory or processor so for enabling this transceiver to enable which is being given to the g bar which used for enabling the transceiver den signal is connected den stand for data enable next is dt oblique r bar which is used for deciding in which direction the data is forwarded so firstly dt stand for transmit so when it is being one signal is being sent to the transceiver the data is forwarded from microprocessor to the memory that is trans transmit and when this is zero the data is forwarded from the memory to the microprocessor so this is what happens in the with the help of dt and den bar now rest signals are nothing but a0 and bhe depending upon the 8 bit data which is being fetched from the memory whether it is coming from the even address memory or odd address memory a0 and bhe bar is used and from the combination of a0 and bhe bar the cse that is chip select for even segment cso that is chip select for odd address memory similarly for rom case cse and cso which are being provided to the respective memories for chip select logic so this is the minimum mode configuration of 8086 diagram from which we are going to form a memory read cycle for this 8086 microprocessor now as you can see there is something seen as a first is nothing but the clock now why clock is used because 8086 and all the digital circuits are nothing but synchronous circuit and for providing at which time what operation do we perform we need to perform this synchronously so for that purpose the one clock cycle is used which forms from t1 t2 t3 t4 as we discuss the maximum clock cycles can be four apart from that there is a address bus data bus ale bhe m oblique io bar dt oblique r bar den and rd bar now this is what happens inside the one bus cycle now we are going to discuss what happens in each t state now firstly t state is can be formed from the falling edge of the one machine cycle to the falling edge of the next machine cycle so this forms a one t state so falling from here to here now in the first t state of machine cycle the address bus carries the address now as we can see the address bus is multiplexed with data that is we represent it it as ad0 to ad15 so it can carry address as well as it can carry the data so at which time it is carrying the address that are being decided by the ale signal apart from that there is a most significant four bits that is a16 to a19 which are being multiplexed with s3 to s6 so what it carries in the first t state that are being defined by the ale signal now what is the significance of ale signal ale stand for address latch enable now where we have seen this address latch enable in this minimum mode configuration of 8086 so when this goes high so this latches are being enabled and whatever the da data bus 
or address bus is carrying that are being latched onto the 8282. So now in this case the first is said the address or data bus carries address that is A0 to A15 and A16 to A19. So when the address latch goes from 1 to 0 on the following edge this address is being latched onto the external 8282. So for, for that purpose now the same bus can be used for the data. Now firstly why we are going for this address and data bus multiplexing is because the pins which are being required in the 8086 are limited. So now 40 pin DIPIC we have seen in which if we have the separate lines for the data and separate pins for the address the size of IC may increase. So for reducing the number of pins and reducing the size of IC the pins of address as well as pins of data are being multiplexed and because of that this address slash enable is required. Now at the same time in the T1 state itself BHE bar goes high or zero depending upon the even or odd address bank. Next important signal is M oblique IO bar. So it goes from zero to one. Now what it signifies because we are reading the data from memory. So this M signifies which is the one in this case will signify whatever the data read by the 806 in this machine cycle is from memory. Now this next is DT oblique R bar that is stand for data transmit or receive. Now in this case the data is being received by the microprocessor. So that's why this R bar should be enabled and is which is active low. So the DT oblique R bar goes from 1 to 0 in the T1 state which signifies or which selects the direction of data bus inside the microprocessor. After that DEN is not used in the T1 state and the RD also not used in the T1 state only ALE address and address bus is used. Now in the second T state whatever the address which are which is being sent by the internal bus of 8086 microprocessor that is being already latched onto the 8282 external latch. Now after that the address bus goes tri-stated because it does not carry anything and whatever it carries whatever the garbage value zeros or one that should not be considered until read signal is being enabled. So this address bus goes tri-stated. Now what happens to the higher four bits of the address bus that is A16 to A19. So at the same time the data which is being forwarded by the address bus carries now the status that is S6 to S3. Now that signifies first of all S3 and S4 signifies which segment is being interfaced right now. S5 signifies the interrupt is enabled or disabled. And apart from that the DEN bar goes low which is active low signal because of which the external transceiver which is being connected to the 806 microprocessor which we can see like this. So at the T2 state DEN bar goes low because of which this transceiver is enabled. And the same way the RD bar goes low because of which this memory read signal is being enabled. So which is being seen. So DEN bar goes low in the T2 state and RD bar signal goes low. Now we have selected the direction of transceiver in input mode that is receive mode. After that we enabled that. Now the microprocessor can accept the data. So the data will be available in the T3 state which is being shown as D0 to D15. Now this is data will be available to the 806 microprocessor. After that this data will be accepted by the 806 microprocessor in the T3 state itself. So all the other signals become same in the T3 state. Now one thing is in between this T3 state if 806 finds that whatever the data required from the memory is not available in that case the TW state that is wait state is added into the after T3 state. Now what this wait state is used because the frequency of operation of 806 microprocessor and the frequency of operation of memory may not be same. So in that case if the ready signal is not high at the end of T2 state the one of the wait state will be added after T3 state because 
it will require more time to accept the data. But in this case, since the data is ready in the T3 state itself, it can be read in the T3 state itself that is D0 to D15. So this is being read in the T3 state itself. Now in the final state that is T4, in T4 state whatever the signals activated which are nothing but the status signal, after that the M oblique IO bar, after that D, T oblique R bar, D N which is which goes high which will disable the transmitter so that it cannot accept on further data and next is nothing but the read signal which is being disabled because of which the further data which is available in the, on the data bus will not be read. So this is what the steps performed in a each cycle. So first of all, we will just summarize the read cycle in a small step. So firstly, in the T1 state what happens is address is available on the address bus which is being latched onto the 8282 latch by using ALE signal. In the second state, the DN and RD bar is used for selecting the transceiver and enabling the read signal. In the third T state, whatever the data required from the 806 microprocessor that is being read by the pins. And finally, in the T4 state, whatever the signals activated that gets disabled in the T4 state. So this is what happens in the read cycle of 8086 microprocessor in minimum mode. Now we are going to see the write cycle for 8086 microprocessor. So some similar operations are being performed in the write cycle also, but only two signals will change that is nothing but the write signal and the DT oblique R bar. Now again we will see by using T1 state what happens in the T1 state what happens in the T2 state, T3 and T4. Now first of all we will see the in T1 state. In T1 state as similar as read cycle the address will be available onto the address and data bus. Same for the address and status signals. Now address latch enable goes high which enables the external latch. So this address is latch onto the external latch. After that depending upon whether it is accessing a even address bank or odd address bank, the BHE bar signal may go low or may go high. Next is nothing but M oblique IO bar. M oblique IO bar signifies with whether the operation is performed from the me memory or IO. Now in this write cycle we were discussing memory write cycle that is why it is high. High signifies that the data is being returned to the memory. Now next is nothing but a data transmit and receive. Now in the previous read cycle what we have seen is the direction of transceiver is in input or it is receiving a data because it is a reading a data. Now in the case of writing the cycle DT oblique R bar it goes from 0 to 1 that means DT goes as 1 and R bar becomes 0. So DT stands for transmit which goes from 0 to 1 so which will select the direction of transceiver which you have seen. So this transceiver will be selected the direction from right cycle that is from 8086 microprocessor to the memory. So this signal goes to the direction point line. Now next please DN and WR bar these are not being used in the T1 state. So basically address and address latch enable gets enabled. Now in the T2 state what happens is the first bus which is carrying the address now it carries the data that is D0 to D15 in T2 state and the second bus which is higher 4 bits of address bus will carry the status that is S6 to S3. Similarly S3 and S4 used for signifying which second segment is being interfaced. S5 is used for enabling the interrupt. In T2 state as we have discussed, first of all data bus carries now the D0 to D15 in write cycle. The further 4 bits are used for specifying the status that is S6 to S3 and apart from that the DN bar goes low which will be enable the external transceiver and WR bar goes low which will select the right mode of the memory. Now where this 
right bar goes is nothing but this is nothing but the combination of m oblique io bar and right bar signal so when this m oblique io bar which is nothing but low in our case and right bar goes low this m wr bar is selected this signal is connected to the ram which will select the direction of ram which will enable the right enable for this ram with the help of which the data bus is now forwarding the data to the ram so combination of right and combination of m oblique io bar is used for writing the data and for enabling the right enable signal of ram now in the t3 state is given for writing that whatever the data available onto the multiplex address and data bus to the memory so it takes some time that is d0 to uh, d15 data will be returned in the t5 state of 8086 microprocessor minimum mode bus cycle now in the t3 state itself after the data will be read the dn bar goes high and wr bar goes high which will disable the respective transceiver as well as the ram so t in the t3 state if the data is not written so it will be add the wait state after t3 state and these signals that is dn and wr bar goes in the next wait state and finally in the t4 state whatever the multiplex address and data will be out from the 806 microprocessor status goes for the second cycle and all the other signal which are being initiated that are deactivated so this is for the case of memory read and memory write cycle for 806 microprocessor in minimum mode configuration now the same operation is performed for io read and io write also only the difference is if we consider what happens in the io write cycle is this signal that is m oblique io bar that goes as a zero because which m oblique io bar is used for signifying if it is one it is used for specifying m that is memory and if it is io bar goes low that is used for signifying io devices so when it is low the same operation is performed in the io devices also and similarly for the read cycle of io that is input output devices the this signal that is m oblique io bar goes low which will signify that the combination of m oblique io bar and read bar is used for enabling the read and write cycle of 806 microprocessor so in this case we have seen what happens in the t state or what happens in the case of machine cycle so basically machine cycle is a combination of four t state in the 806 microprocessor and some of the operation performed in t1 state t2 state t3 state and t4 state so the combination of all this operation will consisting of one machine cycle so in this lecture we have seen the memory read and memory write cycle for 806 microprocessor thank you